and you can see a great video of us. And we're gonna have some fun day. And my papa is showing these stuff. Fish and things, we got them ready. Better fish and things, they're ready. And some better more fish and things. We have some That's hooks and bullet weights. And here's some more hooks and some Jigs. fishing things, jigs. And we got these stuff. We got a spray, spray, spray. And we're ready to go fishing. So let Papa talk. So let Papa talk. All right. Today we are going fishing indeed with my daughter Lisa again. Today we're going to do some bank fishing. So we're going to be targeting bluegill. I brought two uh, rods here with some lighter line on them and I put a little size 6 hook on. We're not targeting big bluegill either, just uh, what's close to the bank right now. It rained really heavily yesterday so we're going to see if if uh, we can find some that might be muddied up near the banks. Um, but I brought a couple of bass rods just in case because you never know. So. I think we are loaded up. I gotta throw some ice in the cooler and uh, maybe we can catch some fish for you. to catch some bluegill and whatever else may or may not be down there. But it does that, let it nibble it for a little bit longer so it can bite it and eat it. And then if you see it swimming with it, 
stand and set your hook. So today we, we uh, caught a few bluegill. I just wanted to show you real quick what we used. Uh, one of the mistakes I see when we just used worms, we didn't use crickets or anything. Um, but I just set up a very, very simple, basic elementary setup um, with just a little uh, sinker, a little lead weight on there. But the one thing that most people I've seen make mistakes doing I just put a little tiny number six hook on there. Obviously, if I'm targeting bigger bluegills, I'm going to have a little bit bigger hook. You can't catch a really small fish with a r oversized hook, but you can, can catch a bigger fish with a smaller hook. It'll just be a little harder to get it out. But if you're planning on keeping them anyways, it's not as big a deal if it swallows it. But when you're fishing with a, with a child, when you're fishing just to catch them, um, don't go with an oversized hook. Even on that reality show uh, alone, I've noticed a lot of the people there, they'll run their little uh, trot lines or make some type of uh, cane pole or something to fish with. And I've noticed that almost all of them use two aught size or three aught size hooks or bigger. And uh, inevitably they're frustrated that their baits always are taken off the hook. The simple fact is, if you use a smaller hook, you will catch more fish. Now, you will catch more small fish also, but in a survival situation, that's good, or in a fun day out with your child, uh, that's a good thing also. You, there's nothing more frustrating for a child than not being able to hook a fish that's eating the bait off of their hook. But six pound nanofil, it's, it's, all, it's thin like dental floss. It'll cast a long way with or without a weight on it. In fact, if you put a little eight hook and a worm on there, that'll cast, you know, uh, far enough and yet you still have some strength in case you hook something a little bit uh, bigger than just a bluegill. I didn't catch real big bluegill this morning with uh, my daughter and she didn't catch any real big ones either but we kept a few. Most people wouldn't consider that worth keeping 
Um, but it is. I'll show you here how much meat you can get off even even a little fish like that. Obviously, just like you're gonna fillet anything, start here about where the gill cover stops, pull out back towards the backbone, slide your knife down it, come out down there by the anal fin, out the tail. It's very easy. Now, for these little ones, you're not gonna get any meat off the bottom side of the rib cage, so I will just peel it along the outside of the bones. Just peel it all the way to the skin like that, pop it in, slide it down, flip it over, and out the top. Throw that section away, flip your finger on the tail, slide that out. There's the skin, it's off of there, throw it in your bucket. And now you have this section here that I always call fish nugget. Throw another fish up here because it doesn't really take that long. So a lot of people think this size fish isn't worth keeping. They're looking for those ones that are bigger than hand size. But a hand size bluegill AC kicked off. I probably should have turned that off before I started talking to you. But there you have a little section right there. Sometimes bigger bluegill are a little harder to find, but these sides are almost always by the bank somewhere. And so you can take and catch these. And if you catch 40 or 50 of those, and if I had worked hard by myself, I probably could have done that. Then you'll have quite a big meal, and it really doesn't take as long as a lot of people think. clean them and they are tasty in fact I'd put bluegill this size up against crappie don't have to worry about the bottom side of that at all. Don't worry about the bottom side, just take that off the top. Don't worry about any of the guts, any of this. You're not going to get much meat off that bottom side on these small ones. So like I said, it's just these fish nugget size. And what I wanted to show you here, we've got a huge big handful there with just several of those. So that's a little meal for three people. And that's just a short period of time. Good, tasty, fresh, clean meat. I'm Daniel, the low budget outdoorsman. God bless. Bella. Bella. Load up. Sit. Sit. This is my dog. Skip. Say bye. Alrighty.